where this man properly belongs. He belongs behind bars. That's right. All right. So uh, as you can see, he no holding on. Bail. He holding on. Yeah, with no bail. No bail. No prisoner. There it is. That's that's not the true image of Christ. See that right there? He's in real bars. That's where he's going. Caesar Borgia. Do you recognize this criminal? There he is. Couldn't have it no other way. Behind bars. It's showing you in the Bible that you don't control nothing. He controls all. Whether you want to be evil, there's a reward for the evil men. Whether you want to do good, there's a reward for the good men. All right? Get that understanding. The reward for the evil is death. The man who chooses to go astray from the most high's word, that's death. So you see brothers getting shot in the streets. Why? Because they're not keeping God's laws. That's right. That's why they're getting death. But those who do his word and have a little hum, hum, humbleness in his, in his heart, a little bit of humility in his heart, he's going to live. Right? He's going to live. We. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. So everything that the Most High created is His. Whether you be evil or whether you be good, it's His. He got your number. He knows how many gray hairs are on your head if you got any grace. If you don't, He knows how many hairs is on top of your head. The Most High knows this. Read. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. He said, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. So I, I just said the same thing. The most I said is when you don't keep his laws, death is upon you. Death is upon you if you don't keep his laws. And you look at this place called America and all other countries. Who's actually keeping the most high's laws? That's why death and destruction is coming to all these countries. Because they're not keeping the most high's laws, statutes, and commandments anymore. People are breaking the Sabbath day. Don't you know the Saturday is the Sabbath day? It's the day of rest. All right? He says, six days shall you do work. The seventh day is the day of rest, right? Tell them, what's the first day of the week? Sunday is the first day of the week. First day of the week, Sunday is. So tomorrow, which is Sunday, that's the first day. That's not the seventh day, right? A, a first grader can see that. Yeah, a second grader can see that. The seventh day is the Shabbat. It's Saturday. As a matter of fact, Shabbat means that. All right? It means seven. All right? So get that understanding of the scripture. So on the seventh day, what are we supposed to do? We're not supposed to buy. We're not supposed to cook. We're not supposed to sell. That's that said the Lord. It's in the scriptures. All right? So what are our people doing? Buying, selling, cooking. Right? It don't mean that you can't wash your clothes with hot water. It just said not to cook with hot water. All right? It don't mean that you can't turn on the heat because you're cold and it's snowing outside. You gotta have some common sense. That means not to eat or cook barbecue like that. You gotta have some understanding when you're reading the scriptures. See, people read it for word for word. It's not like that. That's why Christ came to show you the common sense of the Bible. All right? That's why he came. Read. But if a man just, if, if a, so I can. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. So what is lawful and right? We keep saying, the Bible keeps saying what is lawful and right. Give me that. Let's show them what right is. Hold that verse. Don't lose it. Psalms 119, 142. Let's find out what lawful and right is with the Bible. We're going to find out what the precepts say. And this is for you. You are the children of Israel, Negroes, Latinos, American Indians. There's 12 tribes in the Bible that the world has forgotten all about. The 12 tribes existed in the past and exist now. It hasn't went in anywhere. Read. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Now he said the righteousness is the everlasting righteousness. We're going to get the answer to the question that we just a asked earlier. Read. And thy law is the truth. And thy what? Law is the truth. So we got to keep the righteousness by what? Keeping his law, which is the truth. That's the truth. Anybody say, I got the truth, I got the truth. Well, what is the truth? The truth is the law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible. That's the truth. The truth is the laws. You keep the laws, that's everlasting life. Give me Proverbs 7 and 2. Proverbs 7 and 2. See, our people got to just think. If you could just think about the things that we got to do in this body, because this body ain't forever. You only hear what? If you live a right, 70 years. That's really no time. 
a lot of brothers and sisters are getting gunned down on the street before they even hit the age of 20, 30, 40, all right? So how do you live right? You keep his laws. You treat your brother like you want to be treated, but not in our communities, not in the Latino or the Negro communities. We kill each other. We got gangs. We got gun violence. Don't you know it talks about gangs in the Bible? We'll get that. I'm going to have a brother read this real quick. Read. Proverbs 7 and 2. Keep my commandments and live. He said keep his commandments and do what? And live. That's what we're supposed to do as a people. Keep the commandments and live. The commandments are written all throughout the Bible. They have not been done away with. Christ said I come not to destroy the laws, but to do what? To fulfill the law. Meaning what? You got to keep his laws. The ultimate law is what? Love the most out of all your soul. The second one is what? Love your brother as you love yourself. All right? And you Latinos, you Negroes, you are the people of the Bible. We got, we got books predated back in the 1400s where they said that the Mexicans were the tribe of Ishikar. All right? That the Peruvians was the tribe of Ishikar. That the Colombians was the tribe of Asher. Man, we got all kinds of stuff, man. All right? Literature, we got everything, man. All right? Let's go there. Go, go to um, Psalms 1 and 10. You got any questions, brother? What, 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 are you on the sign, your forefathers? Okay. On what side? Are your mother's side or your father's side? Who's on your father's side? The Spaniards? Well, that would make you from the tribe of Israel. Right? These are the tribes of Israel right here. The tribe of Israel is right here. The conquistadors were the Spaniards. They went down into Mexico and they robbed, stole, and killed all the people in, uh, yeah, in South America. But they're Mexican Indians. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Well, first and foremost, the Most High is coming for the 12 tribes of Israel first. He gotta, he gotta set his people in line, right? So when he sets his people in line, the rest of the world, right now, the gospel is being preached in the churches. That's not the true gospel because it's not waking up the 12 tribes of Israel. You're not even telling people who the 12 tribes are. When you read Revelation chapter 7, matter of fact, let me get that. So you better hope that your line goes back through here, because Israel is going to be saved. It says, Revelation 7 and 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So it's talking about the children of Israel. That's 144,000 are going to come out of it. So that's why we got the sign. Ezekiel said to lay out that sign so people can see who they are. They ask them according to the sign who they are, who their forefathers are. All right? So it says, verse 5, of the tribe of Judah were still 12,000. So when you look at the sign, it says Judah, the Negroes. So the Negroes are the most defeated, <coughs> beat up people on the earth, but they're the most loving, most hated people. All these people are brothers and sisters, see? So when Judah raises up, then the rest of the tribes are going to raise, raise up. Like during that days of Martin Luther King, right? Remember the, uh, the, the civil rights movement? It was the Negroes who actually pushed that, but when they sat back, that's when the other nations came in and they took advantage of that, see? But it was the Negroes who woke them up. And that's the same thing going to happen with this, okay? The Negroes are going to get rights the most highest chosen people, all these people on the side, the Puerto Ricans, Cubans, you know, the Latinos, the Mexicans, and so forth. Those are the, the most highest chosen people, all right? Give me Ecclesiastes 4 and 16. I believe it's 4 and 16. So it says here, <clears throat> And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So it don't even it mentions Judah, but then it tells you more. It says that the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Look for Reuben on that sign. That's your map. Simeon Indians. Okay. Then it says of the tribe of Gad. That's the American Indians. Okay. That's why they destroyed all the children of Israel. Went off with the law, statutes, commandments. That's why they're in the predicament that they're in. The Indians all beat up. You know, on their reservations, they have major mutts. Yeah, the Mexicans don't know who they are. They all messed up. The Negroes all messed up. The Puerto Ricans all messed up. You know, that's not even the Puerto Ricans' real name. 
the white folks are the one to put us in this in this whole predicament. Okay, well the Negroes, this is our paper, the so-called Bible. Okay, well you better hope you come from a more. Okay, if you come from a more, you may be a part of this sign, a part of, see that's the thing, we can't see it with the naked eye. The only way, the only way you can see it is through your forefather's lineage. Okay, but genealogy, if you, you, know, you talk to the average brother on the street, he don't know his daddy. Right, so how do we know? Based on prophecies, right? So we know in the Bible it says that the uh, 12 tribes of Israel are going to come on slave ships. In, in Deuteronomy 28, 68. Give me that real quick. You got that verse that I told you to get? Yeah, read that real quick. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 16. There is no end of all... Listen to this. Listen to this, brother. This is the wisest man. This is Solomon. He's telling you something. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 16. There is no end of all people. See that? So the American will tell you that these people don't exist no more. They call them totally different names. Chinese, Mexicans, uh, you know. We got all new names, all of us. Negroes, that's a new name. That's the whole point. Exactly. Exactly. So we don't come together as one. Because before that, the land was peaceful, the people was peaceful. You could go drink out the river and not get poisoned. It was like the Indians said it was sweet. All right, you had ox. Where the ox at today? Ain't no more oxes. This place was full of oxes back in those days, you know? They killed them all. We got pictures of showing that when the white man came over here, he had slaughtered like hundreds and hundreds of oxes. He just sitting up there like a trophy piece, all right? And that's what's going on, you know? Go ahead, Lee. Even all that have been before them, that also, they also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Right, so we're not able to rejoice in our forefathers. Go to Deuteronomy 28, 68. We're going to go to Deuteronomy 28, 68. Let me show you the slave ships. The slave ships are in the Bible. That's why we got the sign out here. That's how our people know who they are based on the slave ships. Because right now they done did away. Can you tell me where the nearest slave ship is today, back from the 1600s? They destroyed them all. Yeah, that's why they don't want you to know. They destroy ships. You ever go over to San Francisco over there? Go to the Fisherman Wharf. They got all those cobble blocks on the on the on the uh, yeah cobblestone. Well, that's because once they once they dock, they took the cobblestones off the ship. The cobblestones balanced out the ship from you know rocking and turning over. So they took them all off and they put them in the sand so they could walk on the sand. Then they destroyed the ship. It's no, it's no need for the ship. See. Go ahead. And then they took over the land and they called themselves by the names of the people. So when they got out the ships, they had one intention, and that was to kill all the people there. That's why they killed their ships so they couldn't go back. You know. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. Egypt means bondage when you go into the Bible. Exodus 22 says the house of bondage is Egypt. This is the house of bondage for all the Negroes, Latinos, and American Indians. We're here and we're trapped. But we work here for a living and we do this to build up the nation of America, but not the, our nations. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemy. Now, did you miss the part about the ships? Because you read about the ships in it. Okay, so the ships those ships. The transatlantic slave trade, uh, trade happened and it's a splitter in history because you can't go over it. It's in history. You know, you guys a Chinese man, how did the Negroes get here? Slave ship. Everybody knows that. It's no mystery, right? No, before that time, there was no other other slavery where ships was involved. Not, not to that extent where a whole nation came. Hmm? You shall see it no more again and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Slave men and slave women, that's what bonds mean. Over in the Wall Street, we was known as bonds. We was commodity, all right? That's why we were, uh, what, one, one, five, uh, three-fifths of a man, you know what I'm saying? Because they held, they held us at the same statue as horses, cows, cattle. We were livestock. We came over on wholesale, basically. So we were bonds, okay, in barrels. Right? What did I tell you? 2868? I want you to go to Habakkuk 1 and 6. And I told them when they came over here, they destroyed their ships. Habakkuk 1 and 6. It's after, um, you know what it is? 
after Hosea, I believe. So in Habakkuk, he also prophesied what was going to happen. All the stuff that we're telling you is all in the Bible. Every bit of it. But most people don't know how to read the Bible, including pastors. Pastors don't even know this history is in there. That's why they only teach you what? The New Testament. How to, how to save yourself. But the saving is keeping the laws. That's how we're going to save. That's how we went into this business in the first place. Habakkuk 1 and 6. Read. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 6. Start a slide, Bob. Start a slide. Verse 5. Behold, ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which ye shall not believe. Right, where must the heathen? He's working that work right now, but changing our changing our minds. All the, all the way, matter of fact, I got a book in here. Let me show you this. Everything that that we've been through. Have you ever heard of this right here? The uh, protocols of the learned elders of Zion. Okay. Basically, there's a ruling family that runs this place called America, called Europe, right? America is just an extension of Europe, of Great Britain. Right, like the 13 colonies, right? So when they came over here, they came to conquer and destroy the lands and the people. When they came over here, they also took on the names of the land, which were actually the names of the people who were here. So now they're calling themselves those people, you see? Read this, huh? book is Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion, The Great and Small and Antichrist by Sergei Nihilus, or Nihilus. Page 52, under the second paragraph, we shall change history. It says number four, Classicism. Classicism, also any form of study of ancient history in which there are more bad than good examples. We shall replace with the study of the program of the future. That's what they did. When they came over, they replaced everything that was prudent, prudent to the normal man in this country and all other countries. They destroyed all that. Come on. We shall erase from the memory of men all facts previous centuries which are undesirable to us. That's why they brought the educational system under Karl Marxism. Right. They brought the educational system starting from the kindergarten all the way up to the 12th grade system where they brainwashing you, basically. That's our form of brainwashing because it's not teaching you anything uh, worth living for as far as like a trade. It's not teaching you about the trees. It's not teaching you about the, uh, the community, the herbs. It's not teaching you about none of that. This is teaching you how to be a robot and work for somebody else. Right. Read. And leave only those which depict all errors of the government of the Goyim. The Goyim meaning the Gentiles. So the Gentiles were scattered to the islands of the earth. Okay. So these particular men, which is so-called white men, which is written in the Bible, these are the children of Esau. Esau is a so-called white man in the Bible. His prophecy was to go out and destroy all lands and to condemn all those who broke the laws. The Most High, he's the Most High's vessel of destruction. He goes out and he destroys all the people who don't keep his laws. So he made two entities. He made, he made the good and he made the bad, right? Satan was made for that purpose, to get into a certain people and go out and destroy. On the other hand, you got the children of God, which are the 12 tribes of Israel. The Most High used them for a purpose, and that's to be the teachers to all the nations about the good things in the Bible. Then you have the Gentiles. The Gentiles are like the Hawaiians, the Samoans, the East Indians, all right? Those are those people. Right. Exactly, the Islanders. Those are those people. The, the children of Israel's job is to teach all nations the goodness of the Most High, how to keep the laws and how to establish the communities, how to establish the land. Okay? But the, the seed of Satan, his is the opposite. It's destroy the land. Okay? You can drop that and go where I told you to get in the Bible, Habakkuk 1 and 6. So that's just one little small thing here. It's a good book. You should buy it. All right? All right, read this. Behold, the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 5. Behold, ye among the heathen, and regard, 
and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which ye will, which ye will not believe. Which ye will not believe. We couldn't believe we was getting destroyed. You ever seen that movie with uh, Mel, G uh, was it Mel Gibson uh, when he did the Mayans and the Aztecs? Oh, yeah. Who's in there? Apocalypto. Remember when they ran to the beach and they saw Columbus coming on those ships? That was a wonder. To, like, what in the world is that, right? And they came over to what? To destroy. Really? Though it be told to you, for lo, I raise up the Chaldeans. Chaldeans are that people, right? The so-called white man and his wise men. Go ahead. That bitter and hasty nation. So he calls them bitter and hasty nation because that's what they do. They don't care. They don't regard anybody's age. They don't regard the young. Right? Which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Right, so what did they do? They, all you gotta do is look around. This is the same people conquering all the lands. It's all in the Bible, see? Read. They are terrible. They are what? They are terrible. That's what the Negroes, Latinos, American Indians saw when they came, because the conquistadors came down there, and what they did was they found out that the little kids were playing with marbles that was diamonds. They found out that they had gold Sorry. stacked in the pile. Right, there's nothing to them. But when the conquistadors saw it, it was like, okay, we're gonna take all your food, Go get all that gold, every bit of it. If they didn't bring it, they would start hacking them up, kill them, exactly, and feed them to the dogs, top off half a breast, give it to another dog, you know, read. And dreadful, and dreadful. What? their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. What? Their horses are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the ebbing wolves. Right, so the most high said that's what was going to happen. Right, and it happened. Jump to the second chapter and jump down to about the sixth verse. Shall not all these take up a parable against him? Right. All these people, once they find out who they are, you know, the so-called Samoans, Tongans, Hawaii, those are the Japhetic people of the Bible. That's Japheth. It's not uh, so-called white man. He's not Japheth. Japheth is in the islands. As he tells you in Genesis 10 and 9, that Japheth will dwell in the islands. And so the same hasty people went into Europe and they destroyed Japheth's lands, pushed them out of there. That's how he ended up way over there in the islands of the Pacific. That's how he got there. So those people took over those lands. Alexander the Greek took on the name of Japheth, Kittim. All right? They took on the name of Ashkenaz. They took on the name of Gomar. They took on the name of Meshach, which is Russia, which is Moscow, the capital of Moscow. Okay? Read. And a taunting proverb against him, and say, Woe to him that increases that which is not his. Everything that he took was not his. So that's why all these people are going to wake up. That's why it's the spirit moving on the earth right now. People are tired of the same stuff. They're tired of being treated bad. People are starting to wake up. And it's beyond me and you. I'm telling you and the people that are listening to me, but there's many other brothers and sisters out there that are doing the same thing. Whether it be the internet, newspaper, TV programs, it's going on as we speak. Everything, the information is out there. There's so much information during this time period. In the last hundred years, look at all the things that was invented. TVs, computers, rockets going into outer space. All, right? all that stuff is prophesied in the Bible. But it all happened in the last hundred years. What makes, um, let me ask you this, what makes the 1700s different from the Egyptian days? What makes it different? 1600s, 1500s, what makes it different from the Egyptian days? As far as time, as far as the things that were made. You guys fine. Everything stayed the same, really. I mean, you had you had the steamboat, but that didn't come to the late 1800s, right? But when you look at the technology, it was the same. They still had horse, buggy, and carriage, all right? It was no different from the Roman days and Egyptian days. But all this stuff didn't take place until all the people started coming to America. Right, you had the steam, you had the industrial, you had the coal, you had the steel. Everything just took off, right? One thing after another, inventions after inventions. Now we're in the point where inventions are made so much that people are getting thrown out of their jobs because the inventions is taking up spot, right? And so eventually that's the part of the woes and the stress that people are having because they can't afford for their own families. So it's bigger than just, okay, what I'm gonna do in the next year or five years. The most I see is it 50 years, 100 years down the line. See what I'm saying? His mind is so much bigger than ours. All right, give me Isaiah 55 and eight. His mind is so much higher, it's so much 
That's why he said, you can't even fathom what I'm thinking unless you understand my law, statutes, commandments, then the mysteries will come out. You see? And people don't talk about this. Isaiah 55 and 8. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. He's telling you right there, your thoughts can never comprehend what I'm doing. All right, come on. Say it, the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. His thoughts are way higher than our ways, man. We'll never comprehend. That's why we're reading something on the past just to gather what he's saying. But we can't see the future. The only thing that we can see is what the Bible tells us. And the scriptures tell you that the earth is going to be destroyed. It, the earth is not going to be destroyed as a whole, but it's talking about the societies of earth. Right, so all the societies, give me um, Job 12, we go to the 21st verse. The societies of Earth are going to get destroyed. And how? You see those nuclear missiles over there in Russia? They've been building those a long time, right? They're going to use those missiles. America's going to use these missiles. It's, they got too many of them stored. And they're not getting rid of them, right? See? Uh, Job chapter 12. Verse 21, he poureth contempt upon princes and weakeneth the strength of the mighty. He removeth away the speech of the trusty and taketh away the understanding of the age. Oh, I see my view. He poured contempt upon the princes and weakeneth the strength of the mighty. That was 21. 22. He pour, he discovereth deep things out of darkness and bringeth out to light the shadow of death. Okay, so start right there. Actually, find the part where he raises kingdoms and destroys kingdoms. I think it's the next verse. Listen to this, brother. This is verse 23. He increaseth the nations. What did he do to America? He increases the nation. What did he do to Russia? He increases the nation. Did he not increase all these nations? Didn't they say, God we trust? Well, who God did they trust in? See? It's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's a different God. Really? And destroy of them. So he raises them up and then he destroy them. Like Rome was destroyed. Egypt was destroyed. Babylon was destroyed. Right? All these nations have been destroyed. Right? But when you look at our people over there, they try to gather each other for God's word, right? But well, when they tell people to get saved, then what? What do you do then? They're not telling you part two. They only tell you part one. Churches are built on just that. It's not built on the law, statutes, and commandments. Teaching our people how to dress, how to be to one another, how to raise children. It's not tell you know, they're not telling you about that. They just tell you. You know, just be saved in Christ. That's all they can tell you. They don't know the Bible. And then the history. They don't know nothing about the history. Especially the women. It really comes down to the men. The men run the nations. Right? The women, they carry the children. They teach the children. But the men, when wars jump off, who's in the wars? It's the men. Right? When, when, when the wars used to jump off, what they used to do is go into the other countries, kill all the men, and then pregnant the women right off the bat. Exactly. But when you listen to the churches, which is about a thousand churches from 150 all the way downtown, they're all teaching the same thing, but they're not teaching you everlasting life as far as keeping the commandments and what's going to happen next. They're not even telling you prophecies. All right? So we got to go into the Bible to get that understanding. Go back to Ezekiel 18 and 4. Ezekiel 18 and 4. So, the Bible is really a history book, it's a spiritual book, it's a war book, and it's only given to the children of Israel. They're the only ones really can break it down. All right, read. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. Uh -huh. Behold, all souls are mine. So all souls are his. Come on. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. All right, so like I said, the most I control is the left hand side and the right hand side. That's why Christ said, I come on the right hand side. Hey. All right, give me, uh, go right. to uh, Proverbs 21 and 16. Right. So the whole point of us coming out is to wake up these tribes, man. That's why we say, are you on the side? I'm not just going to say, man, you're condemned. You're going to die. You know, some of us do that. You're like, man, you're going to die, man. No, you go into the scriptures, you show them, ask them what their fathers is on that, and you tell them what's going on, what's going to happen. Really? This is Proverbs 21 and 16. 
The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. And that's those people over there. They're wandering away from the book. That's why you got Jehovah's Witness. They got what? A whole nother book. You look at um, Seventh-day Adventists. They got a whole nother book. You look at Islam. That's a whole nother book. Okay? Give me uh, Revelation 22 and 12. So they're wandering from the law into the congregation of the dead because they don't have the law. The laws is what's going to say. Daniel kept the law. Moses kept the law. Christ kept the law, right? Paul kept the laws, 22 and 12. And behold, I come quickly. You're coming quickly, right? Come on. And my reward is with me. So they tell you, free yourself, get saved, and you'll get your reward here on earth, right? He said the reward is coming when, when he come back. So how you gonna get your reward? People don't understand, they so used to the American society, I do something for you, you do something for me. They thinking they're going to get it. Yeah, they think they're going to get it just like that. But Christ said, you know, when you do good, it's being tallied in heaven. He's bringing the reward back when he comes back. And believe me, when he comes back, he's not coming with flowers, daisies, and roses. Huh. He's coming back to destroy, man. That's right. All the stuff you see in front of you, give me here, Matthew 24 and 14. 24 and 1. Let me show you. This is what the disciples said, like, we built buildings and we said, oh man, the Freedom Tower is so pretty, right? So high and tall, it's what, 1,676 blocks made to create. You know, we trip off of that stuff, right? In 24 and 1. Matthew chapter, tw Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to, came to him for to shoe him, shoe him the building, sh to show him the buildings. Right, so hold on. So Christ, back then, the, the most marvelous thing built was Solomon's temple, right? That was the second temple. Now they're trying to build the third temple, right? But they don't understand that Christ said, tear down his body and I will build it in three days. He wasn't talking about the actual temple. He's talking about the people. Right, the people are going to be built up spiritually. Together, we become a temple. He said, "With well, two or more, are there I am." That's a temple. Okay, but he's telling these disciples they was marveling about Solomon's temple. Right? Read. Okay. Show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, "See ye not all these things? See ye not all these things? Payless shoe stores, the church over there, that building, that building. See you all these things? Come on." Verily I say unto you, there, sh there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So what is Christ saying? Just the opposite. He's saying destruction is coming. And no matter what, man. Here they are, here the disciples, they are happy. They have, look at this temple. That's our people today, the same thing. Christ, he got a whole different frame of mind. Like, man, every one of these buildings are going to be on the ground when he come back. See what I mean? That's what they're not teaching, how Christ is coming back. He's coming back with roof, wrath, and anger, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why we got to get right, because even the prophets said, oh, Lord, Lord, who will save me in those days? Because they was, when they saw the vision, it scared them so much. They was tripping, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and these are men. These ain't no little wimpy men, no feminist men. These are hard men. Right. Right. They wore their beards. They had big old hairstyles. You know what I'm saying? They wore their garments. Women triple. Men triple when they stepped up and said their name. You know what I'm saying? But now, men are all in a feministic tactic. You know what I'm saying? They want you to be all fair, wear your pants all tight. They went from baggy pants to skinny jeans overnight. Right? We got skinny jeans, man. That's putting that feminine vibration out there. Young men wearing skinny jeans, you know, or wearing their pants all the way down to their ankles. You know what I mean? Really? And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? All right, so they scared now. Now they're asking about the end of the world. First, they was, they was into the uh, worldly things, right? Now they all scared. You know what I'm saying? Go to the 25th verse. And that's how our people got to be. What's going to fear us into getting into the law and commandments is God's fear. Because right now, man don't fear anybody. You, you can see a brother take a gun and shoot another. Boop, boop, boop. You know, die, brother, die, nigga. That's how they be talking, right? That's not fear. Fear is, you ever seen a man like the, is, the Muslims do? They slice a person's head off. They do it right in front of everybody. To put what into them? 
fear, right? That's the fear we're supposed to have the most high. Not saying we're going to do that, but we're supposed to fear this the same way. Right. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Right, you got all these fake, uh, fake antichrists now saying, Oh, he's in the desert. Christ is over here. All right, Billy Graham is over there. Go and see him. You know, Buffalo Dollar just came. He's going downtown Oakland. Go see him. That's Christ. Right? Really? Behold. This is the word of the Lord of hosts. I took you from the pastures and from following the sheep to be prince over my people as well. I have been with you wherever you have gone and have destroyed all the enemies in your path. I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them and they shall dwell in their own land.